Good morning, YouTube. This is Tanya Zapkina, your helpful analytics advisor here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to convert an Amazon Comprehend medical output, which is JSON, into a table, and then save it into CSV or Excel. I'm going to use Python and convert the output into a Pandas data frame first, and then save it. I prefer using Excel because this particular output has several tables with subtables associated with them. But let me jump into the code and show you. This notebook is saved into my GitHub repository and the link is in the description. This analysis uses three packages, which is JSON to import JSON data, Pandas to create Pandas data frames, and OS to get the directory listings. Let's load them up. I use a two-part folder structure where the first part is my Comprehend Medical folder and the second part is the project folder so I can switch between different types of analysis. And I also have the results file name in here that I downloaded from the S3 bucket. So the local results file name um, looks like this. First thing I do is I load the results into a dictionary, and then I process that dictionary into a series of tables or data frames, and then save them in either comma separate value or Excel format. What you need to know is that the particular output that Comprehend Medical uses is similar to a relational database where you have the um, this what you have here is this sub dictionary of entities that are basically records in the main database and then within those uh, entities there could be more than one trait or more attributes and they are linked back by the entity id or this first id number right here so let's take a look at the code that processes JSON. So I have this, this series of functions that extract certain types of outputs out of the results. So these first ones are traits, attributes, Rx norm, and ICD-10. These are the sub-dictionaries that I extract out of JSON. And the last one is extract entities. This is the main table. And what I do here, in the sub-dictionaries, I have a series of try and accept statements that help me process the results without errors, especially in cases when that particular JSON doesn't have a certain input. And then in the last one, I actually take all of these traits, um, attributes, Rx norm concepts in ICD-10CM concepts and kind of pop them from this particular output and then process the main table. So let's run that and go and see what the main record table looks like. What you're going to see in this table is 98 rows, which corresponds to the number of dictionaries in the entities in here when we um, loaded it up. See um, number of records in the output. These are the main records extracted from the database. For example, this pregnancy. Uh, that the patient is pregnant, that's a medical condition, and then there's a diagnosis name. Let's take a look at one of those records. This record is um, swab samples, and this is test or treatment procedure, and the subtype is the test name. Let's see if they have any attributes. So first, what we need to do, if we need to um, find out what the entity ID is for this, so this is row number 12. And the index is zero. So let's double check. Location zero. Yes, swab samples. So for the attributes here, this is the this is the test value. Entity ID is negative. So let's see if there's any other attributes associated with this record. So I'm going to say well zero. And there's just one. And um, let's extract traits. And there's no entity ID number zero, so there's nothing in addition to it. So what we have here is swab samples produce a negative result. That's how the interpretation of this goes. 
Now let's try to export this. And so I have the code here. And what it does, it takes your folder and file name and exports it either Excel or comma separated value. Because each of the file names uh, of analysis results, JSONs that you have, will have multiple tables associated with them, it makes most sense to export into Excel. What I do in this code is I create a folder called processed where I'm going to save the results and I take the file name, I take out eight characters from the end which is the two extension and I add an Excel extension and then I create tabs called entities, trades and if present RX norm, ICD-10 and attributes where I export those data frames. So let's pre-run. So let's see how this works on our JSON file. We have exported 98 records, which is what expected, and let's take a look at the output in Excel. So we have our Excel file, here's the name up on top, and we have the entities with entity IDs, and we have, let's see, how many 98 records. We have traits, which is a limited number of records, and then, of course, our attributes. And let's take a kind of a random attribute and trace it back. So 11 and 14 are basically blood pressure because this is the values and this is the test unit. So let's go back to the entities and find there they are, 11 and 14. I'm just going to make them a little bit bigger. So it's a test treatment procedure and test name is blood pressure. And then this is the, the millimeters, how much it pushes mercury. Basically, it's the same test that it refers to. Um, is it a little bit rough? Yes, it should refer to 11. And the units of measurement should be the millimeter of, of Hg, which is Latin for mercury. So let's go back to our code. And um, look over the CSV output. In the CSV output, because I cannot create different tabs, what I do in this process CSV folder, I create different files. So I add underscore entities, attributes, traits, etc. to the end of the file name and then and the extension is comma separated values and basically do the same thing. I check if the data exists and then I create the comma separated file. I've created the same output now and let's take a look. And it looks like we have some issues with encoding and let me double check. Um, yes, the encoding is UTF-8 for the CSV files that just shows you that Excel is a better solution for this particular um, output because it does have non-standard characters in there. This is a code that processes the whole folder where I find every .out file and I get the JSON and export as Excel into a new folder called processed. So this is my Rx norm project. Let's run that and see. So these are all of the files that I'm processing and this is, these are the names that I'm saving them after. So all these files have been processed and uh, put into a processed folder. So let's take a look at RxNorm. So this is your main table which is the entities and obviously RxNorm extracts the names of the medication out of the text. And what it does next, it, oh, by the way, there's a pharmaceutical factory that I found as a brand name. I mean, it's possible as a company name, but it's not really like Bristol Myers Squibb, but it's not a medication name. So, and it has several different uh, traits and attributes associated with them. So this is number six, uh, Lapinavir, 
and I, where we can add the attributes associated with this drug. So there is a road, a mode of administration is orally, the form is tablets, the dosage is 10 and 100 milligram, again orally, and then every eight hours. So the, it, it finds the words that refer to that particular drugs and it extracts the information out of them. And let's take uh, a look at the Rx norm information, the standardized name associated with this drug name. So uh, of course the first one is Wapinavir and we have the code for this drug and then we have all sorts of um, dosages in administration for it. So it appears that 400 and, and 100 is not a dosage that exists in here. It's kind of double of this dosage. So and that's interesting. Of course, I can export this JSON file into Excel. If you found this information helpful, please give this video a like, and we're going to continue into the ICD-10 concepts. We've got 12 diagnoses and symptoms in this particular file. And so this is the table that has them. So we have pregnancy, fevers three time, subpleural patchy consolidation, ground grass opacities, preterm birth, ground grass opacities, again, atypical pneumonia, infiltrates, asymptomatic, I guess that's a diagnosis, and postpartum. So um, let's take a look at the attributes. Okay, for them, we have acuity, intermittent, um, the length of, just enough acuity, one week. Um, symptom or organ size is chest. This is for number nine. Let's take a look at number nine. Subpleural patchy consolidation, that seems to be right. Um, direction also associated with that, left-sided. And then for number 11, it's right-sided. And number 11 is ground grass opacities. This is a COVID patient, so this is all all checks out. And so the ICD results, let's take a look at number nine, which is uh, the, the subpleural patchy consolidation. And there's different suggestions about what this diagnosis code might be. Lobo pneumonia, candidiasis, and bronchopneumonia, other pneumonia, emphysema. So, okay, these are some of the codes that this system suggests, interestingly enough, none of them have high confidence score. So wobble pneumonia is the highest. Let's take a look at the protected health information. We have 19 instances, 19 entities, and in this particular file, we have the date the, uh, of the admission, the age of the patient, the type of medical institution, fever clinic, hospital, address, date, all of the information associated with the location, and then specific unit. Let's see if we have any traits. Extract traits, and then we're going to do results. There are no traits, and let's see if we have attributes. There are no attributes. The next step is to understand how you can run the analysis in Comprehend Medical real time using their API. Basically, what you do is you take your unstructured text in Python, you send it to AWS server, and you get the JSON for that particular output back. And you can do real time analysis right from your Python.